Now, this is an argument taken from my book, The Holy Bible versus the Hebrew Israelites, where I look at the biblical claims of the Hebrew Israelites to prove that uh, the Bible says that the Israelites were black and show that the Bible doesn't, in fact, say what they claim that it does. And 17. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. When we look at the story that the passage in Hebrews is referring back to, uh, this, this story of Esau and Jacob and Isaac, it has nothing whatsoever to do with Esau wanting to repent of his sins or uh, and not being able to do so or find salvation. Uh, it literally has nothing to, whatsoever to do with that. The repentance that Esau could not find was not his, but his father's. Esau sought with tears his father's repentance that he should take back the blessing or that he should bless him. Esau wanted his father to rescind the blessing that he had given to Jacob and give it to him as the blessing was rightfully his. Yet his father did not rescind or recant on that blessing that he had already given to Jacob. The passage also has nothing uh, to do with Esau's descendants and their ability, uh, or rather inability, to repent of their sins or to find salvation. I know the Caucasian man have a lot of evil deeds written on their history, mm -hmm. right? But it's all white men evil. You know what? Is the Caucasian? I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Kwadash. And double honors to the elder apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Also a sincere shalom to you other elders in Akim, fellow laborers uh, pushing and doing sincere work in sincerity and truth. And also let me say shalom to the followers and also shalom to the elect that we like to, you know, try to reach and strive for. Anyway, um... What drove me to this video is the end of the intro with the Jake that came up and he said, I mean, uh, we was going so long on the live stream that it just shut out. Um, you know, we get a lot of these people come up and he asks questions. Um, and he asked that where in the Bible does it show that the Edomites uh, have this kind of fate coming dealing with their nationality and why <clears throat> according to the nationality would God do that prove that God said as, as a nationality not a people of works of why he's punishing them not just because the works they did sh show proof that it's because of the nationality of them of why they're, they're going to get um, their fate now so I seen this other video with this guy saying now he's trying to exclude um, Esau out of the birthright and by saying Isaac, you know, and this is the uh, desperation that we see to save this man. Okay, so nobody's never concerned with the uh, the rulers of darkness and what they're doing, but <laughs> they just in the Bible say okay. There's a reason uh, somehow, somewhere, that we have to find a reason to save them. Now, I can understand them, but the jet that came up, well, they, they, they'll try to save uh, them more than themselves, right? A chariot came, and they said, well, it's either you or them. Jacob shoot them on first and, and turn, you know, on each other. But anyway... 
Um, this was real easy. I mean, this is really easy. This is Genesis 25 and 29. Uh, and it goes on. Let me just get to the point. And Jacob sought pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. And Esau said unto Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Right? Um, and Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swore to him, him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. This is why Hebrews was quoting it back. If it wasn't a big issue, if it was just talking about Esau, then Apostle Paul wouldn't even have to have mentioned that. That would be a one and done deal. It was Esau. Uh, and what? He sold his birthright. Why is this everything? We're going to go to the scripture that prove it's more than just Esau, right? Uh, it was to say, Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage for lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went this way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, right? So when you go up to the other verse, it says that Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of the venison, but Re Rebekah loved Jacob, right? Because the firstborn with the birthright but the most high let's go to Romans the ninth chapter see this is the most high show right um, let's go to Romans 9 and 10 um, 9 for this is the word of the promise at this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son right you had Abra Abra Abram and Sarah who had Isaac Right, uh, and not only this, but Rebecca also had conceived by one, and this is what we read Romans the ninth chapter. This was breaking down that that this was the seed line from uh, with Sarah having a son, from Rebecca having a son. All right, and it goes on to say, uh, for this is the word of the promise. At this time, will I come, and Sarah shall have a son, and not only this. But when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, right? Why do you say by our father Isaac? Right? See, a lot of people don't understand reincarnation. But anyway, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Yahweh according to the election might stand. So at the end of the day, that is the cut. Uh, well, the biggest cut is going to come when the, uh, in the, the next book I'm going to bring up. But that is a cut right there. Uh, because it's at the end of the day, it's what the Most High set up from day one. It says, for the children being not even born, haven't done any good or evil. So this proves to this guy, we broke that down to him, and he still was lost. He was saying, I was just the baby. But we'll get into that. It proves it wasn't just the baby. The red baby. It wasn't just that. Okay. It says at this time. Uh, we're going to say. Um, and that the purpose of Yahweh. Uh, according to the election might stand. Not of works. But him that calleth. It was said unto, the, unto her. The elder shall serve the younger. It was already said. So this thing was already set up. No matter what, you know, uh, the trickery of, of Jacob and uh, the supplanting, let me say that, and he cried for the birthright, the Most High already set it up because he already knew. And it's a shame that these people don't have the understanding to put the strength in the spirit and the Most High to know that the Most High is the one that set everything up from the beginning. It's just that simple. So let's go to, um, let's go to Malachi. Uh, this is it right here. It says, Malachi 1 and 2, I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet say, wherein has thou loved us? Was not Esau's, Esau Jacob's brother? Saith the Lord, yet I love Jacob. Now we just read in Romans the ninth chapter that he already chose Jacob before they were even born. He said, yet I love Jacob and I hated 
Esau. Uh, let's go on. It says, um, and I hated Esau and laid and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness and the people. Right? This also proves Esau is Edom. And the people against whom the Lord have indignation forever. How do you get around that? So you can say Hebrews 12 and 17 and you can say that Esau, it was just he, it was, he was repenting for Isaac. All the crazy madness. Why does the Lord says the people that he has indignation forever? Right? And your eyes shall see and ye shall say the Lord will be magnified from the border of Israel. Right? So let's go to Obadiah. Okay? It says, Thou shouldst not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shalt not have looked on uh, their affliction. So when he says there and my people is plural, it's not talking about one person. This also, when we hear the word Jacob and Esau, we're talking about a nation against another nation. This is what we just read in Romans, the ninth chapter. Uh, uh, the eldest shall serve the youngest. One nation against another nation, right? Um, Nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither should thou have delivered those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. All the heathen. Jeremiah 30 and 16 come to mind. All the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall also, shall, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Right? For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. Right? So this is what's coming. Verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for a stubble, and, the, the, and they shall kindle in them. So this is not talking about some regular building. When you're dealing with a house, you're dealing with a people. This is why they don't call it the abandoned building a house. They call it a, a, a building, okay, or a project, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's, it, you know, and they might call it abandoned houses, the people were once there, a house is a people before a place, right, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame, but the house, the house of Esau for a stubble, and they shall kindle in them they shall kindle in them and devour them the scriptures go to mind I, mean Daniel, I believe Daniel um, where the scripture says the saints of the most high shall take the kingdom and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for the Lord have spoken it now we got to go into history or the present where in the history have the house of Esau there is not any remaining of the house of Esau. But I think the book of Ecclesiastes says there is no end. It says no, there is no end. Uh, okay, of of all people. Okay, there's no there's no end of all people. I think Ecclesiastes four and sixteen. Let me see if I can get that. There's no end of all people. Um. It says, there is no end of all, all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely this is also vanity and vexation of spirit. Okay, so anyway, um, I just wanted to touch on that to show that this had nothing to do. Hebrew 12 and 16 and 17, let me say that, was strictly 
dealing with Esau. It was not dealing with Isaac, although Isaac was a part, you uh, know, was mentioned in it because obviously it was his son, but it had nothing to do with Isaac in entirety because when you read the scripture in Deuter I mean, uh, Genesis, the 25th chapter, it said he was pissed off. Esau was. And then when you go on to, you know, to sum it up in a nutshell, the book of Malachi says, and the people of Edom, the Lord have indignation forever. The people, all the people. This is not talking about one person. Just as uh, uh, the, the nation of Israel, the nations of Israel, right? What happened to them? What happened to us? We all went. Right? We all went as a nation. You get punished as a nation. Jeremiah 34 20, uh, what is that? Uh, I think Job 34 29. Okay, that's all I have on that, Shalom.